little yeah. stressful. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Let's Talk. This is a show that will introduce you to some of the many wonderful people that live out on the East End and make up our community. Today, my guest is Donald Smith. Don has been a fixture here on the East End for over 40 years now, and I know you are going to enjoy his story. So welcome to the show, Don. Now let's talk. Thank you. Thank you. Start by talking about the fact I know that you come from a military family, and for a lot of people that's very interesting. How, what is that like? Well, my, uh, my father was, a, was the son of a Baptist minister, and my mother was the daughter of a horse trader in Arkansas and in Tennessee. And... Uh, during, uh, they both went to college at Arkansas State University. My father looking to get an education and my mother to find a husband and leave Arkansas. <laughs> leave Arkansas. <laughs> and she was successful. Um, but uh, that on December 7th, 1941, when Pearl Harbor happened, my father realized that he was going to have to go into the Army at some point. And so he stayed in college. He went to ROTC. And then when, gra when he graduated, he went to uh, Officer's Candidate School and Flight School. And uh, he joined the Army, and he spent 35 years in the military. Wow. Um, uh, my, uh, he went to, he spent the last f several months of the war, of World War II, in Belgium flying. And then he returned to the United States, and then he took my mother to Munich, uh, where they lived for a couple of years. And then they returned in 1947, and I was born in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And that started every year for the next 35 years of my father's career. We moved every single year wow. from one post to another, from a post, then to um, uh, uh, local housing, and then on, on to post housing. But it was, it was extremely difficult for my mother, who... Um, who had to pack up the house and pack up her boys and mm -hmm. drive them to the next spot. My father, my father would have gone f further ahead and uh, and she would meet us there. But my brother and I loved it. We Did loved you? the excitement of it. Huh. It was it was extremely nice. It was wonderful. And, and people have always said, "Well, don't you miss having roots?" And I said, "Well, if you've always had blue eyes, uh, you don't miss having." brown eyes because you never had it right so right. it was it was we, we lived in germany for three years when i was in high school uh, 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 first two years of high school it was the life you knew it was exactly what i knew and i really really loved it so. i have one picture of you with your dad that is my father and my grandmother and me uh, mm -hmm. when i was sometime in like probably seventh or eighth grade we were at a um at a field um a weapons uh demonstration and my father wearing his uh, colonel's uniform. You're looking very official, that's very, for very sure. Very, very official, very, very much so. And you hiding behind him a little <laughs> bit. Behind, oh, as always, <laughs> as always. But even in those days, I was taller than my father. Were you? Just an inch or two. Oh, yeah. So, yeah so. Wow. And your brother? My brother uh, was four years ahead of me. Okay. So he was, we, he was always going out of a phase as I was coming into it. But, uh, but we... Uh, we uh, uh, I really, really, like I said, I really, really loved it. I enjoyed working. I was in the army. Well, I was not in the army. But I was with my father, and we. Um, uh, I went to high school in um, Columbus, Georgia, uh, and I found theater, theater and dance. Wow. My father was in Vietnam. He had shipped off to Vietnam, and, and I stayed with my mother and uh, spent the last two years uh, in uh, Columbus, Georgia, going to high school and doing theater and taking dance classes, and I really, really loved it. So when my father returned from Vietnam, I, uh, I went to college in Richmond, Virginia. Is that this, this headshot? That's a headshot from that. From your college years? From my college years, and uh, I... Uh, Handsome young guy. Well, there, you, there you are, at least. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I, um, I, uh, uh, I was very successful. I, I had done a lot of theater work in high school, and as a freshman, I was uh, one of the only freshmen that stayed on the main stage uh, the one year that I, would, that I was at school there. After that year ended, I decided I was going to go to New York and be an actor. Okay. Uh, my father wasn't terribly pleased about I'm that. Sure, but I'm sure not. Anyway. Most parents aren't when their kids say they're going right. to New York to be so, in theater. Exactly. So I went to New York, uh, and probably eight months later, I got my 
draft notice. Aha, uh -huh, and that brings us to this photo right here, these two photos exactly. right here. Exactly. The top one is me in my uniform, and that was in Vietnam. And this was 1967, at the height of... Right, exactly, the height of Vietnam. Absolutely, uh, I remember it well. I decided that I was, I would, like my father, I would rather be an officer and fly than be on the ground as a true, as an infantry troop. So I went to flight school uh, and got commissioned in the Army and for, had a year's assignment in the States and then went to Vietnam uh, in 1970. And that was, uh, oh, 69 was really the, the epitome of the, of the terrible, terrible things that were happening in Vietnam. But I spent uh, a year to the day and the first two months I was flying for a combat assault unit I was flying troops into combat, and we would take off, and we would... So you would drop them off in the fields, you see that on TV, exactly. right? And uh, it had been strafed by, you know, by you know, airships and uh, gun, uh, gunners and clearing the way for us. And then so we would come back several hours later, and after the troops had moved to a certain area, we would pick them up. And uh, on this one particular... Actually, it was my 21st birthday. Uh, we landed at this PZ to uh, pick up zone to pick up these troops and as we were taking off we flew over rock, uh, uh, rocket propelled grenades and M60 machine gun fire uh, AK-47 rounds and the aircraft kind of limped back to a safe zone and it came to a rest we landed nobody was hurt but the aircraft was completely destroyed wow it, was, it had 25 hours on it and if you think about that, that's that picture, that UH-1D that's, there. That's, it's, is yeah, that, that what you call a that's, Huey? That's a Huey. It's mm -hmm. a Huey. And uh, that aircraft had 25 hours on it. And in today's dollars, it cost $2 million. Wow. And they were, they were letting 19 and 20-year-old <laughs> boys fly those machines. That's war. So we, uh, they, at the same time, they, they, uh, a message went out in Vietnam and said, anybody that has a little more flight experience that would like to fly for a VIP unit in Saigon, raise your hand. And I said, I'd love to do that. I'd love to go to, I'd love to, go to, I'd love to, go to Saigon and fly generals and colonels and in-country dignitaries. So the last 10 months, I, I flew in Saigon, and it was, it was terrific. It was, uh, I went to dinner at... That's nice restaurants, had much nicer quarters. But. But. <laughs> uh, it, it was not without its peril. I mean, right. There, there Tell was, us about that. Well, we, we were um, in flight school. You're told that if you, uh, if you have an engine failure, and helicopters are very easy to land. I mean, you, you find a place to land. You take all the pitch out of the blades, which gives you lift. And you find a place to go and you fly toward that. And just as you're land, just about to touch ground, you pull up the plane and it pops in uh, uh, backdraft to the ground and it cushions your, your flight. Mm. I had, an, I had a, a, a general that I was flying down south from Saigon and uh, he, I had an engine failure over the city. <laughs> and I found a soccer field, landed the aircraft, and this general tapped me on the top of my head and said, Mr. Smith, why are we landing here? I have to be in Nabe in 15 minutes. And I said, well, sir, we had an engine failure. Another aircraft is coming to pick you up. And so we, he, he went away and they, another, they came and picked us up and they came back and got the helicopter later. They fixed it. So it is easy to land a helicopter, but when you're over Saigon, which is a pretty close, tight city, right. it's, it's not without its challenges. You have to find a spot. So, so when I moved... When I got out of the army, I got out of the army when I came back to the United States in March of 1971. I got out of the army in San Francisco, and a friend of mine who I'd met in Vietnam said, "Why don't you, before you go back to New York, if you're going back to New York, why don't you come uh, visit uh, visit me in Los Angeles?" And it was March, and New York was 16 degrees. And Los Angeles was 75 degrees. <laughs> I thought, oh, I might spend a week or so there. <laughs> and that week nice. ended up being 10 years. Well, just before we get to that 10 years, of all the Vietnam movies that you've watched, right. I'm sure you've watched them all, What, which one strikes you as the most realistic? I think probably Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse does, Now. Because it was so crazy. And that was 
uh, the crazy feeling that you were there. It wasn't actual. It wasn't real. It wasn't. Right. There wasn't a commander walking through the, you know, putting his card on, you know, on dead bodies. But it was that sense of surrealism, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, daily you didn't you didn't think of it on a daily basis. You you just kind of did your job and whatever, and uh, and then you would see that there was, you know. Something was happening, and when you were flying, whatever whatever mission you had, you were always on medevac. You always uh, you always had to listen to the radio to say that you had to pick up somebody at a at a at a, at a place here where who was injured, and that's why there were fewer deaths uh, because we would get them right away and bring them back to base hospitals, and then they would be sent to Hong Kong or or other other places right. on their way back to the United States. Right. Uh, whereas in Korea, that, that did not happen. In World War II, that did not happen because they didn't have the, um, you know, the helicopter right. to pick people up. Mm. So. Um, okay, I don't want to jump over Los Angeles. So tell me about Los Angeles now. Do you study theater again? I or? went right. Uh, went, stayed in Los Angeles for ten years. Uh, I went to Cal State Los Angeles, and I went into theater. Is that what these pictures and, are? Yep, yeah, that's uh, that uh, was a. Ultimately, I did a, a I did Bobby, and the picture on the the left is the the opening scene of a play called Bobby, and I was I was Bobby. It's a Sondheim play. Center musical, stage, of course. Center stage. And, uh, it was a really really f well received production, and uh, we ended up reviving it a year and a half later, and entered it in the American College Theater Festival, and won for the Western Division. Okay, and, and that's... We took, we took it to Washington and performed at the Eisenhower Theater. Wow, that's exciting. It was extraordinarily exciting. So this uh, is a magazine, right? That's that a cover? magazine cover, like, you know, what's happening where, what's happening in theater. In uh, Washington in, in, or, in, yeah. In Washington. Huh. Washington so. so it was the cover of this magazine, and uh, it was, again, that's Bobby in the middle, right? So it was, it was an exciting thing. And yeah. So when I uh, finished that, I... Uh, graduated from school. I got my teaching my teaching credential for high school student teaching students, and I just really wasn't happy. And mm -hmm. uh, so a friend of mine at the same time um, had written a play, a Broadway play. Uh, it was a five character play, and it starred Geraldine Page, uh, Rip Torn, and Julie Harris. And he said, "Why don't you come to New York and uh, you know and come back to New York?" And he said, "Be my be my assistant playwright." And I said, "Ah, come on, I don't try that." Theater. It was theater. Yes, theater. And it was theater on the business end of it. It wasn't. Uh -huh. It wasn't as a performer or trying to get a job. But I have two more headshots. Well, now these are yeah, New were, York, right were back me to when New York. I went to New York, uh, one on the left, and then uh, I did a I did a play called the the Royal Gambit, and I played Henry the Eighth through all of his wives, and that was the one on the right. So. Uh huh. But it was. Uh, it was. But I. I soon kind of realized that I, I wasn't really, I didn't like the insecurity of being an actor. So I, I got a job with a, a media buying service in New York, and it bought television time for uh, local, local things, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, uh, car companies and uh, restaurants and uh, theaters and, uh, and also a cable company. We, we, uh, we pursued and got a... Um, um, a, an account for Cablevision when it was out here in, in mm. Riverhead. And I'd only been in East Hampton, you know, for weekends with friends and people. And so so we put a lot of money into this account to get this account. I was, a, I was, I was an account executive for, uh -huh. for this. And I, uh, I, we, uh, Cablevision then exploded. It became huge. And they realized that they didn't want this little, small, local New York metro area uh, company. They wanted a larger uh, company. So we, we uh, the company went bankrupt. We clo they closed our doors. And I said, now what can I do with my time? And so I, I, uh, I had done some painting and decorating in, in, um, in uh, Los Angeles. And I uh, opened a painting company, and I was extremely successful. I, I just all, I had lots of friends that had lots of apartments. I got referrals. Now, and when you say painting, you're talking about like faux finishes. I did some faux and... finishing. I did decorating. I did uh, regular straight painting. I did uh, uh, wallpapering. And after mm -hmm. a while, I had I had a huge number of clients on the Upper East Side, 
and um, I would do their houses out in East Hampton, and Wayne Scott mm -hmm. uh, in East Hampton. And it was very, very successful mm -hmm. uh, from 19, 1985 to up until into the 90s. And so you're now in East Hampton. And I, you and have moved I would to go East out Hampton. to East Hampton weekends. Uh, okay. we, I lived on Roosevelt Island. And uh, after a while, Randy, uh, my now husband, and I, uh, we're, we were both tired of just a two-bedroom apartment. Uh, it was a lovely apartment, and it, it faced the East River, and it, it looked at it looked had a great view of the bridge and traffic on the river, and it was quiet and open air. But we wanted a bigger place, so, so we we came out here, uh, and at the same time we we started getting into dogs. Okay, I have dogs. a couple of pictures yeah. here about. So this is what ultimately became of our dogs. We we got French bulldogs, and we a uh, little girl on the right is. Um, uh, is uh, a, a little French bulldog girl that won best in best in the specialty show in at six months, eight months, eighteen months. What was her name? Her name was Edwina Rabbit, <laughs> and uh, we I ended up showing her at Westminster uh, Kennel Club. That's this show. This uh, years later, exactly. Photo. Right. That's the so that's there. the same dog. The same dog. Exactly. Was she the most successful one you had? Or? No, we had. She was well, most famous, I suppose. Okay. But she wasn't the most successful. I had. Lots of, we ended up breeding lots of French Bulldogs and had traveled with them all over the country. How long did you do that? Probably 10, 12 years. And you still... I still have French Bulldogs. And you still rescue dogs. I, I still, know you my, have lots Randy of rescue dogs. Randy works at ARF, mm -hmm. volunteers at ARF. Uh, and he, uh, so we, we decided to kind of settle, settle more out at the East End. And uh, we, we built a little house in Wainscott right over here on Westgate Road. We oh, got a piece yeah, of that's, land. that's in this neighborhood. Happy, right. <laughs> right, right, straight right. down there. So we bought a, uh, we bought a half acre and uh, uh, put a Lynch home on it mm -hmm. and just decorated it to death. It was just beautiful. And we sold that house in 10 months. Wow. And we thought, this is good money. Well, that was this fun. This is great. This is easy. It right. gives me free time and uh -huh. whatever. And so I, uh, so with Randy's uh, banking expertise and my decorating and you know, my in the trade business kind of thing, we ended up building nine houses out here, and two in East Hampton. No, uh, I'm sorry, in, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh huh. And it, they would get bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, these are. Uh, Couple of the houses. I have you. a couple photos. This this was your house on Eileen's this path, house on right? Eileen's path. That's and, a beauty. Uh, and then um, the other picture. Look at the sunlight. I mean, the sunlight it, it, is amazing it has in that house. Lots and lots of light. And, uh, <clears throat> Gorgeous it a, house. It was a terrific house. It, yeah. was, it was designed around our dogs. We had dogs <laughs> that were in this part of the house and the other part of the house, and we had door uh, gates that came out of the out of the island and you know separate the family room from the kitchen and whatever. And this is and this is our current house, which is on Diane Drive. And this house we didn't build, <clears throat> but we uh, um, uh, it was already built, and we bought that probably in nineteen. And ironically, we um, uh, we rented it year-round rental to a couple of Wall Streeters just as COVID hit. Uh -huh. And they said, we have to find a place to live. And so we rented it on a year-round basis for three years to them. And all during this time, going back further, we we had been in a, in a little rental that we had, while we were renting out our big houses, we would be, go back to this little house. And we, I rented it for 20, 20 years or so, and I just bought it about three years ago. But I've lived in that house for 20 years or so, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and uh, I joined the First Presbyterian Church, as a matter of fact, uh, about, about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, things were going along, and then in, and in 2013, I, um, I asked you, Barbara, uh, what the status, what the f I didn't know much of it. I knew that I believed in what <clears throat> the Presbyterian Church believed in. But I didn't know that they were an open and affirming church. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of surprised me. So in '13, right after um, it became legal uh, for uh, New York citizens to be married, um, we were married at the Old Whalers Church in uh, in Sag Harbor, and it was Christmas time, and so uh, it was 21, 20, 21st of December. 
in 2013. So we didn't have to buy flowers for the wedding. Right. It was all decorated for Christmas. I, mean, was, <clears throat> I did that like, for my daughter, too. Poinsettias. She, and a big lots of poinsettias. It was exactly. a nice way Filled to do it. it. Exactly. So, so ten, you're coming up on 10-year anniversary. Right, precisely. Exactly. Right. Next month it is. And it was, we were married mm -hmm. on the 33rd anniversary of our meeting in New York. Really? So it's actually 46 years, 43 years uh -huh. uh, uh, in December that we've been together. And, Finally, um, married ten years. Finally, legal. When it was legal, when it was right. legal. a lot of our friends were going to Connecticut or to to New York, but we ne we never we never. So never. what? Uh, so tell me, besides decorating and and working on houses and flipping and what else do you do out here for fun? I mean, you said that Randy's involved with ARF. Randy's with ARF, and he he also volunteers with the Historical Society of East Hampton. Uh, I. I'm pretty much ensconced in the First Presbyterian Church of East. But Hampton. I've seen you dressed as Santa Claus. Well, I uh, I did I did a <laughs> couple of stints of uh, Santa Claus for the Historical Society, and uh, that was a great thrill. Yeah, uh, there's a. Um, Kids are fun. Kids are great. Kids <laughs> are great, and they and they would kind of uh, the, the next year they'd say. Where's, is Santa coming this year to Mulford Farm, or is Santa going to come to the to the um, uh, to the Thomas Moran studio? Right. Uh, so it was it, it was nice to have a following. Did you <laughs> yeah. do it during COVID? Was that the first time during COVID? Uh, it was the tail end of COVID. Yes. Yeah, so there were there's still still the, social the, the distancing kids were, and were social, social distancing. Uh, the kids were supposed to have masks, and Santa had a big beard, so he yeah. didn't he had kind of a mask, but. Uh, but uh, that was not, uh, it, it worked out beautifully. It was, it was a good segue to not having uh, um, a mask. The mask, yeah. That, it was hard to adjust on both ends. Right. Right. It was hard to sure. adjust to them, and it was right. hard to adjust to not wearing them, Precisely. right? right. But I, we, uh, being out here, um, we didn't have the, 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 the mixing as people did in the city, for instance. It was right. pretty easy to be, to be isolated. And, right. Uh, and to not, you know, we never, we got vaccinated and we got boosted and, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, and we, we, neither one of us really had any, any contact with, with, with COVID. And the Luckily. dogs were fine. The dogs, the were, dogs fine. were fine. The dogs were loving it. How many we dogs there. have you got now? We have four dogs now. Mm -hmm. We have two, uh, three orphans, our animal rescue fund of the Hamptons, orphans, orphans. And we have a little French bulldog girl that I bought to show, and uh, she's now 12 years old. Is that Cha Cha Cha? Cha Cha Cha. Right? <laughs> I remember when you right. got her. Right. So she was a, a cutie. Little, little bitty thing. So. She was very tiny when right. you got her. So. But I, um, I ended up uh, in 22. Uh, the, the, um, it was. I was a little concerned about it, uh, about marching in the. Pride Parade in 22. It was the inaugural um, Pride Parade of, 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 Long, of East Hampton. And it was massively successful. And uh, uh, I asked Randy, I said, Randy, you want to you march? Uh, you want to march on uh, June, whatever that day, June 4th. June 4th, and, uh, 2022. Said, oh, well, I, I would never, I don't think I, I could march. I don't think I could march. And my friend Jack on the, on the far right there, uh, he said the same thing. Well, oh, well, I guess we could, I guess I could march. We had a fabulous time. Yeah. And, then, uh, and it was an amazingly successful parade. Mm -hmm. It was, streets were absolutely lined. And then again, this year, uh, there were only four, three of us uh, for the first prez. We represented first prez mm -hmm. uh, in, that, in 22. And, but this year, there were many, many, many more. Uh, actually, uh, in 22, Jane Hasty and her partner, Peter, um, were in that parade. And then the following year, this, this past year, it was much, much bigger. There were mm -hmm. 10 people from the church that, that marched with, with our little contingent uh, down to the... Uh, next year, 20. Na next year, no, right? at least 20. At least 20. <laughs> so... What have you not accomplished that you want to accomplish? Well, I don't think I've ever said I haven't accomplished something or I, I've never had any uh, no regrets, mm -hmm. as uh, somebody would, once said. But I think what the through line that I've found is that 
moving with my father every every year and uh, never having uh, never having a, a home that I that I knew I would have next year uh, and uh, uh, I, I was baptized in the uh, in the uh, Protestant church chapel in Heidelberg in uh, Germany in wow Germany. yeah and that was the that was the first that was that was the only but I was only there for one year mm -hmm. that I went to services at that so so having finally been out here for the past many 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 years and having one house that I live in uh, and one church that I go to I've kind of found my own roots mm -hmm. and it's been it's been terribly gratifying to me mm -hmm. So yes, I could have maybe if I'd stayed in theater, I might have done something more. I could have worked in worked in an, a, an ad agency or something and went on a bigger campaign. But I have no regrets that I did what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And uh, and it has uh, uh, it has been kind of Randy's and my kind of hobby of building houses and turning them, flipping them, and uh, renting them for the summers. And uh, it's been successful. And I've, we've been successful. Yes. So. Yeah. No, I think I, I think roots are pretty important. You yeah, know, absolutely. as you know, I right, think roots exactly. are important. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I'm glad you found your roots here right, in East Hampton. Exactly. So I am too. Um, I, I like to end my interviews uh, as a tribute to James Lipton, who did yeah. Inside the Actors right. Studio. Yeah. I'm sure you watched that, right? Right. Um, he did a series of questions at the end of every interview, and I'm only going to ask you one. My favorite always was, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say to you when you get to the pearly gates? I prob I would like him to say, come on in. Come on in. <laughs> come, come on, on in. in. It would be nice, it's right? about time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Right. Come on. <laughs> Depends on when it is, of course. <laughs> right, of course. Okay, Don, it's been so nice to talk to you. Um, I'm so grateful for you to come and, and be interviewed and share your story with us on the show. And I want to thank you, and I want to thank my sponsor, Marshall and Sterling Insurance of East Hampton, and, of course, the staff here at LTV who work very hard to make public access television available to all of us here on the East End. Um, please join me next time on another episode of Let's Talk.